Okay, so now you will notice that I have modified the program a little bit and uh, this time I have modified it in a way so that it's, well, go ahead and try to guess what's going to happen. I mean, I'm going to go ahead and build and run it, but uh, do try to guess what's going to happen. I'll give you a hint. Uh, we're going to get a we're going to get a opposite thing of what we got in the the last time I ran this program. So there are things that have been changed. So I've changed this array a little bit with the values that it contains. I have changed the initialization of the point uh, of our variable here. And so p is now equal to the address of the last element of the array. So why is it six? Well, because the index indexing begins with zeros, with zero in array. So it's zero and then it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, etc. In our case, it goes from zero to six, and that's seven elements. And then uh, the for loop has remained unmodified. Uh, the body of the for loop, however, is modified a little bit instead of going instead of uh, increasing, we are decreasing. So instead of incrementing, we are decrementing, so to say. Not sure if that's even a word. Okay, so let's go ahead and build and run. And I did not save it. Draw us. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Are you serious? Let's just build it and then let's run it. It's still printing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How is this even possible? Let me, let me, let me have a look. So this has nothing to do with the array. This is just the loop and the amount of times that the loop is supposed to repeat itself. Uh, this is gonna print out the value this is going to print out the value of whatever is contained at that ad at a particular address. And this here is pointing to the last element of the array. So there should really be nothing wrong with this. There's something wrong with the code blocks because this is not even the array that I, that I originally have here. Or am I doing something wrong? Okay, let's do it like this. Select it. No, why? No, this is a code block here, definitely. Okay, let me go ahead and do this. Uh, save project, save all projects. Project has, uh, gotta fix this though. Save all files. And we're just gonna build Nothing to be done. All items are up to date. Okay. Uh, clean. Ah, there we go. I don't know. There's just probably a caching issue with code blocks. No big deal. It happens from time to time. I could have edited this out, but I wanted to leave it in because something similar might have happened to you. And I wanted to just go over the problem as usual. So it printed the array, but it just printed it in a rever reverse order. So now let's go over this one more time. This program will in fact compile and work as expected. But what we have done is not allow, what we have done is basically not allowed because after the end of the loop, pointer P points to the place in front of the first element of the first member of the array. And by C language standards, this is not allowed because the operating system has the right to terminate the operation of this program. I mean, this is a very, this is not exactly going to happen, but there is a chance that it will happen. So if putting the pointer on a place that is not allowed endangers uh the work in general or his work even though there is a basically little to no chance of something like that happening the problem can be solved by setting the pointer p to point to the location after the last member 
in the beginning of the program, which is basically allowed. Now, I had a mouthful there, basically, but uh, if you set the pointer to point to the uh, to the first, if you set, if it is not, it it is not allowed because basically after the end of the loop, pointer P will still point to the place in front of the first member of the array. So just rewind that sentence. Uh, the pointer can, the pointer after the end of the loop, the pointer P that is points to the place in front of the first member of the array. So that is not allowed. And we're going to fix this in a very simple way. So if you didn't quite figure this out, just replay it a few times. I mean, I'm just saying this is a precautionary measure, but it's not exactly going, it's not exactly going to cause problems for you. It might cause, uh, at some point in time in a very complex program, it might cause it to crash uh, because the operating system will actually terminate it but it is not very likely that something like this will actually occur, especially not with programs of this simplicity. Okay, so, uh, as before, we're just going to have this and this, and we're going to have this, but we're going to change this to 7. So this is going to point to a member after the last member, basically. Uh, so this will assign the address of the place behind the last array member to the pointer P. And now we can go ahead and have fun. But there is one more thing that we need to actually change. When the printout occurs, we don't want the printout to actually print the whatever is contained after the last member of the array. Rather, instead, we will perform the decrement operation first prior to the first printout, and in doing so, we will ensure that that, uh, that that value, whatever it might be after this last member, is not actually printed out onto the screen, because that's not what we want to do. Okay, and down below, we'll go ahead and grab this, and I'll, I shall place it here. So this is going to... Uh, I'm going to need an endel here, won't I? Yep, I will. Endel. Why do I need it? Because I want to go from a different... Uh, I want to go to the next line after this printout has been created in a single line. Anyway. And now I'm going to... Now I'm going to go ahead and get this. And this will print out the first array member because after the end of the loop, pointer P shows on the first member, okay? So after the after the for loop ends, pointer P will show uh, on the first member, so to say. Perhaps not grammatically correct, but you get the idea, I am certain. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and print that out, and for the sake of aesthetics, let's just go ahead and add this. Or maybe not. Uh, let's go ahead and add it. I'm just gonna go ahead and place it here. Oops, sorry, not there. I'm gonna go ahead and place it here. Oh God. Okay, there we go. Let's go ahead and run this excellent so this is going to print out the first member of the array and this will print out the array in the reverse order and it will not take into consideration the element behind the the element after the last the mem it's not going to go outside of the array it's not going to jump outside of the array as we have specified it here so seven seven would be in front of 7.7 .7 and we don't know what's actually located there and we definitely don't want to exit the array boundaries with this pointer because that can that can lead to all whole sorts of problems if you if you set the pointer to point like i don't know if you type in here if you instead of 7 you type in 70 or something like that uh, this will this will still compile but 
uh, you're going to have problems because if you hit the memory space, which is uh, reserved or which the OS won't let you access or whatever, this program is just going to crash, outright crash. Anyway, just wanted to go over that. Now, we can do some code optimization here, actually, which can help us out. I know that it's I know that it doesn't that it has little to no effect on a code of this size, but it's good to know it's good to keep this in mind. It's good to have that sort of a mindset that you should always optimize the code because when you're writing a program with like a million lines of code, let's say, especially in a team, uh people will be far less critical if you if you're writing an op optimized code. If you're writing if you're writing a code with a lot of clutter, that's going to be problematic and people are going to have problems with you. So it's a very good mindset to have to actually write a clean and optimized code. So what can we do to optimize the code here? Well, mm, you could go into the for loop and instead of doing this here, delete this and do th oh come on. Okay, do this and then put a minus minus here. So this is going to shorten the code by one entire line. Okay, and then let's go ahead and save this, build and run. And there we go. That's what I was talking about. This is the this is the value that you're going to get that's in front of the last element. It's something completely random. It might not even be uh, double value, it might be something completely else which got converted or casted into the double value. But if we go ahead and type in plus plus for our from our previous lecture, and if we just initialize this to the zero element, to the first one that is, play it, again we're gonna go ahead and end up with the last value which is gonna be problematic again so th this is not something that we actually can do in this particular example but it's a good thing to keep in mind that you can iterate while you're actually printing things out so if you're printing things out you can always perform the iterations here within the printout itself in our case it is not possible to do primarily because the iteration needs to happen prior to the printout so in that case we can't actually do it but there is one thing which we can do. We can actually remove these. We can remove the curly brackets. Why? Because if you only have one single line of code under the for loop, you don't need the brackets. And if I run this, I'm going to get the same uh, I'm going to get the same thing. So this is going to this is still going to work no problems pretty much, but I do actually need the incrementing and decrementing operation prior to the actual printout. In any case, uh, that, that's, that would be it. I did shorten the code by removing the brackets, but that's just, that was just a demo case, a showcase, if you will. Uh, in our particular case, what I wanted to do was not possible, but I wanted to show you what you can do in general. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and bid you farewell and in the follow-up tutorial we're going to have a look at the comparison operators so what they are how we're going to use them etc we're going to deal with that in the follow-up tutorial shouldn't be too long